Saving lit like oh, E40 ounce of mother. Free, free, superstar twin, cost 200 plus. They gonna put me seven feet deep, still can't fuck with us. You feel like it cost. Welcome to MRE Legacy Talk Show, my boy. How you doing, T-John? Straight, straight, straight. Straight, how straight, you? man. Good, good, good. Top in, top in again, bro. How was uh, how was the Ramadan going so far? Pretty good. It's pretty good. Yesterday. It's just, oh, that's what's up. Yeah, that's pretty what's good up. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm hey, as you guys know, this is MRE Legacy Talk Show. I'm excited to bring another guest today. And today we're gonna be talking about sports, man. You know, it's March. It's gonna be March Madness. Y'all, you already know what's up. So. Just to let you know, there's a background noise. Women basketball team are just practicing, so bear with us, you know. So, but hey, it's gonna be an, an amazing episode today. Today we have TJ in the building, so make sure you know y'all tap in, subscribe, like, and comment. So let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. how is your week going, bro? Man, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty Early good. Though, Monday, Tuesday is be the hardest. Yeah. So. Got to get through it. Any any up, like upcoming games or something? No, nah, our season just ended. Yeah. They gave out like all like the awards, the seating for like the playoffs. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't make it, but we're definitely coming back better yeah. next year. Talking about the season, you was named the freshman of the year. How do you feel about it, bro? It's a blessing. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It was a hard season mentally, physically. Yeah. Just had to get through it. It was definitely aiming for it like the whole season. Mm -hmm. Just like trying to prove like all the hard work I put in, so. Definitely felt good to get some recognition, yeah. for sure. Talk talk to us about, like, how is that mental preparation and that physical preparation, like, you got to go through, especially as, you know, as a basketball player here at Western. How, like, what, t like, walk us through that mental and physical, you know, prep that you, you go through to be, you know, to be named the, as a first man of the year. Um, definitely a lot of late nights, early mornings. Yeah. Definitely a lot. Yeah. I've been here like 1 a.m., 12, midnight. But the mental side, you just got to stay the course because, like, there'll be games where your coaches don't play you. Like, mm -hmm. And it makes sense. Like, he has, like, a plan, so you got to, like, follow it. You just got to be, like, diligent with whatever you do. got to yeah. stay professional. Like, And then, like, when you're having a rough game, you just got to find a way to scrap out, scrap it out. Yeah. You got to win, too, especially. But, like, being the under, like, underclassman, like, the youngest on the team, yeah, it's, like, like, it was definitely challenging, like, trying to, like, figure out my way, like, navigate my way, playing against older people, mm. bigger, stronger. But, like, I definitely adjusted really easy. I feel like after, like, the first, um, like, couple games, that's mm -hmm. when I really, like, started clicking. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, it felt really good. Like, my hard work started to pay off. Yeah. Started knocking down my shots. Started like, finishing at the rim. Felt good for sure. So one thing we talk about here on this channel is mental health. And, you know, I think – Especially as basketball players, you guys really go through some stuff. So how do you deal with, you know, with the loss? You know, let's, let's say you guys l just lost a game. How do you guys deal with that? Like, how do you deal with it personally? Hmm. We pl we played the number one team in the region. We beat them by, like, 20. First, like, Dang. first couple games of the season. Yeah. Then we play, like, a team that's not even ranked, and we lose. Or have a close tough. game, and I'm like, what do we even do about this? Like, how, yeah. do, how do we operate? But, like, I figured out that's part of the game, like, you can beat the best team mm -hmm. and lose to the worst team. Mm. So it's like, we just got to keep going. Like, And, like, when you're, like, taking mental steps towards it, yep. it's always next game, next shot, next moment. Next moment. So it's got to stay the course pretty much. That's Man, that's amazing. So, like, walk us through, like, how would you get to the point where, you know, you're a basketball player right now? If, you know, if you're comfortable, walk us through your journey. Especially, like, did you grow up, like, thinking, you know what, I'll be the best basketball player ever or like did you have like other sports you were interested in you know like walk us through that uh so basically started playing basketball like probably like second grade i like to say yeah obviously ymca boys and girls club yeah and i started playing with my like one of my best friends like oh yeah went to elementary school mm -hmm. we played on the same team going up all the way through sophomore year of high school mm. then i transferred schools but before that in middle school i did track football uh that's about it just those three in basketball yeah uh, football was actually very fun too. I said football <laughs> wasn't my first sport, but like I played uh -huh. them equally as much in a sense. But I've always been a hooper. So yeah, you know. Uh, so, so there's a question that I wanted to ask you: If you had not played basketball, what would you play right now? Football for sure. Football. <laughs> ain't no way around it for sure. Oh man, why football, then? I was just good at that sport. I ain't yeah. Gonna football was fun too. Like it was a different type of energy than basketball. Like, basketball is like obviously where my passions at and like where the game I love. But like mm -hmm. football is like a whole different type of like rah rah. It's like yeah, trying to go and it's like I don't know. Our football <laughs> is different. What's the what's your favorite football uh, team? 
I don't even so watch far. football to be honest. But I'm gonna go with like back in the day, used to be the Steelers, like yeah. maybe on Bell, Antonio Brown, and all them. Oh, this was so. This so. Now let's come back to the basketball side. How did you end up being here at Western and on the team? You know, were you also thinking about you know different places like I don't know maybe Stanford or just like uh, uh, WSU or other ones like. Did you have any top three teams you wanted to be at, or just like, you know, like how do you end up the a uh, Western so basketball team? So um, basically, high school. My cousin DJ, he goes mm-hmm. here. Uh, we were hooping. Obviously, I tra- we transferred the same school. Yeah, he was like really good. We went ten and zero that year because it was COVID, so we couldn't play all our games. Yeah. So recruiting was obviously slow. They were like transfer portals started to become a thing. Mm-hmm. So obviously, that took a toll on our recruitment. Um, then senior year come by, I got injured a few times. Like I hurt okay. my shoulder, dislocated my shoulder a few times during the yeah. year. So I missed like almost half, like probably ten games. Mm-hmm. So, but I was average at 16, 17, 18 points. Word. So basically, that was rough because coaches couldn't really see me play. Mm-hmm. And the year before, I played for a new AAU team in Oregon. Uh, and then like my recruitment started picking up, but like mm-hmm. no coaches really wanted to like pull the pull like. Put me pull the lever. Yeah. So it was like rough going to my going into my uh, senior year, but I did get my first offer. It was a D three offer actually. Yeah. My going into my senior year, um, that felt good. So I'm like, hey, can I get some help with my recruiting? Da da da. He's like, of course, da da da. He helped me. He's like, oh, I know the coach at Western Washington. I know coaches. I right, we had this like scrimmage, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I right, I gotta go crazy, and it was like me and like a couple other people. I had like twenty some points. First scrimmage as a freshman, like redshirt wow. freshman. This is before. This is the four. This year's last year. Wow. And then coach was like, "Oh, we don't know if you want to redshirt you." He's. I was like, "Oh, thank you for the opportunity." But I was in my head. But I was like, "I right, like, I want to redshirt because like I know like obviously like we had guards that are, that are seniors, juniors. They're already ahead of me. So I was like, might as well just wait my wait my turn." Mm-hmm. And then me and like obviously Kai Johnson, Killer, Jonathan Ned, Killer, mm-hmm. BJ, my cousin, Killer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, D'Lo, Daniel, Killers. We all had like twenty points, so it was yep. like, all right, like this this ain't nothing like this ain't nothing too crazy. So I gotta like really like sit down real quick. And I was like, I right, just like picking people's brains. Like D Lo, like that was really like my like it was like this. Mm-hmm. Like he like helped me like get like ca- catch traction like mm. of like the game, how to think away about things, like he taught me that like it's just all confidence. Like the work you put in is nothing without the confidence. So mm-hmm. like you just gotta like have the confidence in yourself. Others will, others will follow. Yep. And then basically did that, started killing mm-hmm. in practice. Had a couple rough ones, though, because they, for me, like freshmen, yeah. had a couple rough ones. But that year set me up, like, iron scholarship the, the following year. Uh, set me up to be, like, a key player for mm-hmm. this team. Uh, we got a couple new additions in the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Will Wilson, he was a big one. Yeah. We had Jenko Drame. Uh, mm-hmm. We had... Who else? We had uh, Louis Ooh. Lewis. He was a key player this year. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but we had good players. And I just I took a backseat role for like the first half of the season. I was coming mm-hmm. off the bench. Obviously, I didn't think I deserved to. But the thing was, like right before the season, mm-hmm. like the preseason, I was killing in my ankle. Like I, I rolled my ankle out for like three, four weeks right before, our, like the week before our first game. Yeah. So I didn't get to play against Montana University, Montana yeah. State. Trinity West, I didn't play another exhibition game, not in our scrimmage. Mm-hmm. And I came off, and coach started playing me like 15 minutes a game, and I'm like, bro, I'm trying to hoop. Like, mm-hmm. and I was hurt like the first 10 games, 15 yeah. games. I was playing like with a limp, dang near for like the first five, like actually a limp for the first mm-hmm. five games. I had 20 points mm-hmm. against uh, Hawaii Hilo, so mm. that was a fun game for sure. Definitely, it's only like an opening moment that like no one can really like feel me. Like, if my mind's on it, no one's really yeah. Like, no one's really gonna mess with me. Like, oh, yeah. I just know I can take whoever it is, no matter who, like mm-hmm. how big they are, what they look like, who, like their name. I don't really care for me. I'm gonna go at them every time. Mm-hmm. So, that really helped me experience things and like set myself up to play this year. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of also mentioned about the injuries. You know, one thing I have. Uh, so I have friends who are like, you know, who like uh, play professional soccer. Uh, you know. They have fest, you know, you know, kind of take backs, you know, just like takes them back, especially the injuries. How did you deal with, you know, the injuries when it when it comes to injuries? Like, we've seen some people actually losing their career, like ending their career because of injuries. So in, in your case, how did you with the, you know, with the injuries and all that kind of stuff, especially when you have to coming back to what you like, 
like we were saying about coming back to fighting for your place and you having an injury, how did you come back and, and, and then be, you know what, I'm the freshman of the year now. So tell us how did you deal with that? Okay. <laughs> if you had to build your own team, who would you put in the in the team? Okay. Like one to five or what? Yeah, well, yeah. Come on now. Uh, we going like all time just now, right now. Okay, let's do all time and then right now, like, you know, recently. Okay. Um, We're going big lineup, though, for sure. I'm yeah. going to go Shaq at the five. That's no. <laughs> Shaq yeah. going at the five. He, he put in pain. <laughs> so you feel me? Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to go at the four. I might hit. Uh, no, nah, I can't. Yeah. Uh, to the one, I'm gonna go AI. Even mm -hmm. though he had two, I'm gonna go AI because mm -hmm. he's giving out buckets. So mm -hmm. crazy. Then I'm going Kobe at the two. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go MJ at the three, LeBron at the four, just cause for me, like just cause, like we trying to give out buckets, like for me, like we ain't playing with that. Shaq gonna hold down the paint, like we gonna we we gonna bring him out. Yeah, I mean, we gonna bring him out. We're gonna pick and roll real quick, catch a lob or two. For me, just hoop. So but, like right now, <laughs> uh, we gonna go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. I just take it back. I'm going to go Kobe at the mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Probably not going to get the ball out, but for me, I'm going to get buckets. So, so, so it's it's one of the funniest questions I always think. Between Kobe and MJ, who who are you going with? <laughs> I'm going Kobe every time for me. Actually, talking about mentality prior to the game, what kind of mentality do you, you, know, do you have prior to the game? As you're entering like a game, like in, let's say you guys are gonna face one of the rival team, what mentality do you go? You know, do you have starting a game? I'm trying to kill everybody. Like, yeah, that's one part of Kobe that I like. So for me, I had to like think about stuff like that. Like, I'm picking up, I'm picking you up full court. Like, mm -hmm. you're not guarding me. Like, I'm talking crazy. Like, you are gonna have to go through me to get this win. So it's like that. Like, I gotta like psych myself up in a sense where it's like, oh, you gotta like. Like, it's going to be a dogfight every single time you're playing against yeah. me. Like, you're not going to like playing against me. So, it's like, I'm going in there with, like, the mentality, like, I'm coming out here, like, showing everybody in the crowd I'm the best. Like, you're not going to outplay me. Mm -hmm. So, so I'll hear you say, you know, you, you played uh, football. And allow me to kind of tie this up. One of the famous person we know in football, Cam Newton, recently had, a, like, a sort of, a, you know, a fight between him and, and some other people. Mainly, I, I do think it was mostly about trash talk, even though, it, you know. So, like, how, how do you deal with the trash talk, especially when you're in the game? And, like, you know, how, you know, because the trash talk in the game, it it might mess you up, you know, if you don't know how to control it. Um, so, how, how do you deal with that, man? People be talking crazy. Oh, like, yeah. Crazy. Like, crazy the talk, is, like, The refs man. never see it until you say something or do something. So, like. I was like, I right. like. At first, I was like, like I never been phased by trash talk. Like that's yeah. another thing. It gets me more like hyped up. Yeah. So I'm going at you. Like we played a team this year. Mm -hmm. Trash talk. They pushing like illegal. They doing cheap stuff. So it's like, all right. Like a lot of teams actually. Mm -hmm. but, like we played. Da -da -da. This guy was talking crazy, and I'm like, all right. I'm talking right back to him for me. Mm -hmm. And the ref letting him do cheap stuff. So I'm like, all right. Boom. Uh, I go. I go by him. Da -da -da. I get a layup. He fought. We both fall to the ground. I get mm -hmm. up first, and I start staring at him. I start talking crazy, and I'm like, "It's like AAU. We do that all the time. Like, mm -hmm. like the, the teams I be on. Like, we ain't for me. Like, we ain't like my high school team. We ain't ducking nobody. Like, we ain't for me. We ain't never yeah. ducking nobody. So we talking crazy. Like, if we gotta take it there, we can take it there. Like, mm -hmm. for me, here the ref team me up, and I'm like, bro, that's so soft because they do the same thing, mm -hmm. but like against us, like they gonna call it every time. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. But like, just gotta I, like that's uh, ever since then I took it like more professional. Like I realized, oh, it's not the same as high school. This is not yeah. like refs. It's not. It's not usual to these refs. Like yeah. they're not. They're not used to like us talking trash, doing mm -hmm. all this. So like, I gotta play their game so I don't get in trouble again. Because coach was like, ah, I can't get another one of those. Yeah. Get out of here for me. <laughs> I was like, ah, that's my bad, big bro. <laughs> that's hey, that's tough. Cause man, I feel like sometimes if you you know. If you're like too emotional, you can't get it in your head. You know, you can get it in your head, especially when people are just trash talking outside the game. They don't know what is going on. But hey, it, it, hey, it's all good. Anyhow, before we continue, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and type in. 
you know, we we out here trying to, you know, give you some good stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So let's come back on your journey, man. Do you ever feel like you, you want to pursue your career into the NBA? If yeah. so, like, what team would you wish to play for? East um, Coast or West Coast? West Coast for sure. I have to go to a big market. But, yeah, I'm definitely trying to go to the NBA. Mm-hmm. Trying to take basketball as far as it can take me. So just, like, trying to keep working, keep doing, mm-hmm. doing what I got to do. Mm-hmm. So, I'd probably pick the Lakers, to be honest. That's a big market team. L.A., yeah. I'm trying to go to L.A., too. That would be filthy. Uh, L.A., or we can go, uh, wouldn't want to play for Portland or something. Mm-hmm. But, like, it'd be a blessing to play for any team, realistically. Hopefully, yeah. Islamists come back. Hopefully, Islamists come back. So, that would be cool. Do you, think they would, do you think they'll ever come back, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was, like, five years. I, th- I think I saw something on Twitter where it was, like, oh, I, Yeah, I did see something on Twitter, too. Yeah. I think it's 2027 or something. But like, yeah, I think they'll come back. But I like to play Super Seattle or the Lakers. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like uh, back then it was for sure people were hooping in Seattle. But like when it comes to the team, I don't think. Well, this is a personal opinion, but I feel like you will do better like in in Cali versus Seattle. This is just like personal opinion because I feel like. Like down in Cali, people are just more of you know entertainment kind of stuff, and it's so easy to just like, you know, be in the game. Versus here, it's just like way completely different things. We know, more, a lot of people know about Seahawks. You know, some some kids don't even know that Seattle had a, a basketball team. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like you probably do get in you know in Cali. I don't know. So talking about our mothers. You know, March is also uh, a month of women month. So tell us, especially, you know, as a man who who believes, you know, in in God. How um, how did your mom help you to be in a in in, in a position you are, and also kind of tied it with your faith? I know you are fasting right now. Tell us, you know, that faith side. And also, you know, like the role of your mom, especially you being here. Mm-hmm. My mom, she just like paved the way, I guess. Like, mm-hmm. like showed me that like, you gotta work for everything you get. Like, and just like that really like coming out here as a freshman by myself. That really like made me like realize, oh, like there's no handouts. Like I gotta mm-hmm. go get it. Like everything will come to light. The hard work's gonna pay off one day. Like. It's just like obviously basketball is just a game, but it's not just a game. Like it could take you so many places. Yeah. My mom just provided everything for me. Like it was really hard for her at a point. Like actually, like really, really hard. So her doing what she did is like, like some superwoman type stuff. So mm-hmm. I was like, I, so I can like, I'm always in debt to her. Like I can never repay her all that she done for me. But definitely blessed to have a mom like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she just like, she's probably the big one of the biggest reasons that I'm here right now. Mm-hmm. Like basketball wise, as a man too for me. That's that's awesome. So, do you have any like basketball rituals you gotta go through? You know, before the game, you see how you know the running go go to just pull up the powder and all that kind of stuff. Like, do you have any ritual you would like to share with the uh, audience? I get Chipotle every time. Chipotle, yeah. if you're listening to this, y'all I need better that. sponsor us, I man. I need that. You feel me? I need that <laughs> card. That free Chipotle card. I'ma need that. Get Chipotle every day, and once yeah. every day, especially for games though. Before you go Chipotle. Get the little tortilla with the uh, bull. Yeah. Real quick. Yeah. We grubbing, so uh, I could do that. Probably those two things. And I just like, I don't know. That's pretty much it, though. I just probably pray and each bull That's about it. That's what's up. Go out there, start pooping. So, so y'all just heard it, man. Y'all just heard it. And before we end over the episode today, you know, do you have anything you got to share to your audience where they can find you, you know, if if they uh, say in the season? Yeah, all right, so. Tijan saying, give me an IG, underscore, underscore, Tijan, T-I-J-A-N, underscore, underscore. And then catch me on YouTube. Top uh, in, top in. She love Tijan. You'll see on my Instagram probably. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, I don't be on Twitter, but if you want to follow me there, you can follow me there for me. Um, but for basketball, uh, Carver Gym, Western Washington University, next September. I know it's a long time, but mark your calendars. Uh, what else we got? That's pretty much it. Go subscribe to my YouTube. Go subscribe to MRA yeah. Legacy. You know tap what it in, is. Tap in, tap in, you know tap in for sure. Yeah, you know. The-